15 percent of these uh, funds uh, are uh, given by the World Bank, mm -hmm. but the rest is purely taxpayers' money. 204 billion rupees for our benefit scheme. We are paying uh, approximately uh, 10 to 12 billion. We are also paying for disabled people, the elderly and the kidney patients. I'm very pleased to welcome Mr. Kumar Dunusinghe. He's an attorney at law and he's a member of the Board of Directors of the Welfare Benefits Board to talk to us all about the welfare benefit scheme, the safety net and uh, into more detail. Welcome Kumar to this program which has been brought to you by uh, Magic Lantern Studios in Rajagiri. Eh? Thank you very much for inviting me for this interview. My, my pleasure, Kumar. Uh, you are a member, as I said in the introduction, of the uh, 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 Board of Directors of yeah. the uh, Welfare Benefits Board. Yeah. Explain to us, to our listeners and the viewers, both in Sri Lanka and worldwide, what does the Welfare Benefits Scheme do? How is it constituted? Yes, it is constituted through, uh, by an act uh, Welfare Benefits Act, uh, Act Number 24 of 2000, two, 2002. I'm sorry. Uh, now, this uh, by this act, uh, there are there is a chairman and four members of as board of directors. Uh, we have been appointed by the Constitutional Council and the Parliament, and uh, this act was brought in as I said earlier in 2002, but this came into full implementation in 2022. Hold on, did you say 2002 and it came, was implemented in 2022, 22. so a lapse of 20 years? Yes. What, what, why is that? Uh, there were various reasons, uh, I would say uh, political reasons as well, mm. social and political both. Okay. Uh, that is, uh, one thing now, there were benefit schemes earlier, which if I go to the history of our benefit schemes uh, yeah. in Sri Lanka, uh, but mostly they were they were aligned with politics as well. Mm. Firstly, it was 1988 or 89 Janasavya, started by uh, Janasavya program was started by His Excellency Rana Singha Prema Dasa, the then president. Thereafter, uh, in 1995, there was this Samurdi Authority Act uh, brought in uh, and thereafter everything changed to Samurdi, the benefit schemes, uh, uh, they, were, they were called as Samurdi benefit schemes. So that was under President Kumar Anathunga? Yes. Right. Uh, and also that continued and in the meantime in 2013 the Divina, Divina Guma Act came into place. And there again, the, the recipients were the Samurdi recipients and the Samurdi authority was uh, in, in force. And there were certain slight changes made uh, in the Divinaguma Act. But in the meantime, this was brought in by the then Prime Minister, uh, Honorable Ranil Vikramasinghe, then uh, in 2002. I see. But uh, due to uh, a, a political reasons, because this act is a very strong act, it's a transparent act. This this has uh, uh, this has uh, provisions to file action against not only uh, people who give incorrect information, but also people, the government, the public servants who uh, who who are not. Uh, doing their services sincerely. So basically, the, if the applicants do not give the right information, false yes. information, yes. and if somebody from the government service like a Grama Niladari, etc., records the information knowingly it is false, exactly. then they are both guilty yes. of a criminal offence, yes. uh, which I think is fairly reasonable yes. uh, if it is knowingly done, because yeah. that's sort of borderlining, if not it's fraud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they could be, both parties could be prosecuted in the magistrate's court mm. in summary procedure. Uh, 
the, all the, the provisions are clearly stated in this act. Mm. So because of that, certain uh, public servants also, they, they, were, they were reluctant to uh, work on this. But most of all, the, the, the administration, the respective administrations of this country didn't want this act to uh, come into full implementation until 2022. Then, uh, of course, now it is in full implementation under the Ministry of Finance. And uh, we started our benefits uh, program. Uh, we had to do a lot of research work. Of course, World Bank helped us a lot. They are still guiding us. They are still giving us a lot of directions, guidance. Uh, we have discussions uh, quite often with the board. And uh, we started this. Uh, we wanted the modern technology also to be included in these benefit schemes. So we started with an app. With a, with a, uh, so that people could uh, register themselves through the app as well as manually. And first, we started in 2022. Uh, uh, we called for applications. Uh, 3.7 million uh, families applied for this. That, that's a big number, right? Big number. Families. It's uh, mm. so. Uh, out of the 3.7 million, uh, we, after, after collecting the applications, we had to do the enumeration. Mm. That is, uh, one of our agents, our representatives will go to the, the respective applicant and get uh, detailed information about it. So, uh, uh, so only 3.4 million families were enumerated. Right. Uh, now, three. Of course, the reasons why uh, some of the people backed off was that there were certain uh, anti-propaganda made by certain interested groups that this uh, uh, this benefit scheme is temporary or it won't get it won't give much benefits as it, uh, was it, uh, given as uh, from Samurudi. Uh, so, due to various uh, misinformation, people uh, backed off. Backed off. So, this is the Aswasuma scheme. This is Aswasuma. So, right. this, was, this, uh, this particular beneficial uh, uh, scheme was called Aswasuma. And 3.4 uh, families participated in enumeration. And out of that, and the enumeration also, I must say, it was done on uh, six main areas. And uh, on, on those six areas, 22 criteria were uh, discussed. And uh, the, our representative would go to the applicant's residence on a prior scheduled time. Because this time was given through uh, the uh, short message service, SMS, SMS. we call in. Uh, for, uh, it was given through uh, SMS uh, messaging. And uh, so that the people in the family or entire family could be present when the enumerator comes to their house. And uh, detailed information was collected. So on those 22 criteria uh, about their education, about their health, uh, the housing, their income, uh, their, uh, their about their families, where they, whether they are extended families, because in certain houses there are two or three families yes. yeah. uh, living. The parents live separately, uh, the children live separately in the same so, house. So, Kuma, in those circumstances, are they separated as families or yes. taken together as one whole family? No, they are for uh, separated as families. Right, so they'll have three separate, if they're eligible, they'll yes. get three separate parents. Yes. Right, yes. okay. And thereafter, only uh, after the enumeration was done, our selection committees, they, they have been uh, uh, considered, uh, they are, the, all the information is being evaluated by the selection committees appointed by our board. Are they at a regional level or at yes, a central regional level? level? A regional oh, level. This is all regional level. So the, the enumerator or the person who goes to visit and meet and ask questions, yes. he then takes down all the answers on a electronic, like on a mobile phone yes, app. Yes. Right, and that's then sent to the... the, the, the that is then sent they, uh, they take them to the divisional secretariat, right? And the divisional secretariat is well equipped with our 
uh, what do you call um, our uh, mobile app it, it is it is right, uh, right. what do you call uh, it's fully computerized sure so then uh, once the data is uh, uh, updated to the computer uh, that is uh, been uh, evaluated by the selection committee mm. of course the data is first sent to our our, our board mm. and thereafter our board is uh, well we have a well equipped it uh, section and uh, uh, after evaluation that we have to we uh, put up the first list mm -hmm. so so it's like a short list yes it's yeah. short listed and then on divisional secretariat level we distribute the, uh, to all the divisional secretariats and it is displayed Okay. And people are asked to go and uh, uh, check whether their names are there. Right. At this point, any person who is ag agreed by, uh, and also I must say, they are being categorized on four, four, four sections. Right. There are now, uh, now there are four categories of uh, benefit schemes here. Right. One is utterly poor or extremely poor. Okay who are entitled for 15,000 rupees per month. Per month, right. Then the poor category, yeah. who are entitled for 8,500 per month. I see. And then the vulnerable group, yeah. they are entitled for 5,000 rupees per month. And the transition group, uh, they are entitled for 2,500 per month. Right. So the first list you find the... Um, the people who are eligible for benefit schemes and on what categories are they uh, eligible. Mm. Uh, I forgot to tell you uh, now, at the time of enumeration, once the enumeration is done, the most important thing is this, the respective applicant has to say that I have given all my details about my family truly mm. and uh, and to the best of his or her knowledge mm. the, the uh, thereafter mm. thereafter the enumerator also has to uh, make such a similar declaration saying that to his best knowledge and belief that the information this, given by this person is true and accurate that's yeah. right and thereafter a qr code with a uh, number is given to the mm. applicant that is called HH number. So that is given to uh, the respective applicant. So thereafter, he has to communicate, he or she has to communicate through this QR code number. Mm. So now, when the first list is displayed, that QR code number is also displayed. I see. So thereafter, if one is dissatisfied with the uh, list, Say, for instance, if one thinks that I have been selected to transition group, but whereas I should have been selected to uh, vulnerable or poor or the poorest, yeah, such a person can tender an appeal. I see. At the same time, if they, if they, are, if there is a person who sees this list and 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 who who who, uh, who thinks that this particular person who is in the list is not I suitable to be a recipient. So a third party can object to somebody's right. name One being there. file objections. I also. see. So right. the appeals and both appeals and objections are entertained I see. after the first instance is displayed. And there is a time limit like, I don't know, 7, yes, there 14, is a time whatever limit. it is. There yeah. is a time limit, mm -hmm. about 30 days. I see. Uh, so within that time period, uh, appeals and objections are collected. Mm. So who hears that? Is it the same then board? We or have to, then we have to appoint appeals board. <laughs> appeals board. Yeah. So appeals board also divisional secretary is uh, the secretary is heading it, and thereafter there are certain other uh, public officers mm. who are including the Gramaniladari. Mm. Uh, they are in the appeals board and they have to uh, look into the appeals. Uh, once the appeals and objections are brought in to our board, the, at the, uh, the main board, main board in Colombo, uh, we have to, we also do have to evaluate, and thereafter we have to again decentralize it uh, to respective divisional secretariat. Uh, so last time, uh, 
we had about over 1 million uh, appeals and objections. There were very few objections, but there were a lot of appeals. Mm. But of course, the thing is, some people, they were over anxious, I think. They, some of them have filed more than one appeal. So, so there were such, uh, such uh, uh, problems created. But anyway, uh, now 99% of the appeals and objections are cleared. And thereafter, only the second list was mm. displayed, and thereafter, we have start. We started paying for one point, uh, little over one point eight million families in the first round. Right. So, just to get this in the right context, three point three million families were the initial applicant number. Initial uh, three point seven million. Three point seven, and then you got three point three. Four million enumerated. Three point uh, four, four million enumerated. Three point four. So three point seven, three point four million enumerated, and how many were benefited? One point eight million. Uh, were the beneficiaries yes. eligible? Yes, in the first round. So, what happened to the others? They were rejected? Yes, now that is a very, merit. very good question, uh, Rohan. Mm. Now, now all the, the entire 3.7 million applicants, yeah. now they are registered in our social protection register. So, it's a new phrase, social protection register. It's like that's a social safety net register. That's yeah, right. okay. Right. Now, they are, because all the details, the, the the details, uh, not uh, the, uh, of course, the information given by 3.7 million is included with us, and the detailed information of 3.4 million is also uh, is yeah, we, we possess them. Right. So all the, the entire 3.7 million, they are in our register. Mm. So uh, now we started our second round this year. And we did the application, we tended, we uh, informed the public that applications uh, we had to, uh, available on, on the website as well as uh, manually. And they have uh, applied this time a uh, little over 450,000 mm. applications uh, received. And now we are on the verge of starting our enumeration. So this 450,000 new applications received. It's in addition to the previous applications received. Exactly. So people are exactly. joining the system. Yes, yes. Uh, any person who had applied or, before cannot apply for the second time. Right. And would they be simply reconsidered for the exactly. extension of the exactly. payments? Exactly. Now, now right. we are. We'll be starting. We have already started enumeration. Yeah. Uh, from 15th of this month, we started till 31st. It's going on. From 31st onwards, we'll be stopping enumeration and we'll be starting the recertification process of the old applicants. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that will take some time because mm. there's a huge amount, 3.7 yeah. million. So, but until such time, if they are rejected or whatever, you will keep paying them their monthly payments, or is it frozen? Well, the so, say for example, if if my name was in the first list yes. and I was getting 5,000 rupees a month, yes, and now we are talking about the recertification process where my name goes back into the hat again or to the pool, yeah. Uh, until you finally determine whether I am eligible to be re-entered, yes. I will get my payments? Yes, you will be getting. Right. Will be getting. So there will is be no... Getting. And uh, also there can be additions as well right. uh, on, on the recertification where people couldn't uh, give certain information that can of be change supplied. of circumstances. Uh, on uh, Considering those changes, we can. Uh, they could be included also. So you, you, you have a very good social welfare net in place in yeah. Sri Lanka. Uh, that's, that's wonderful to hear actually, uh, Kuma, because uh, in more advanced countries, I, for example, the United Kingdom, we have a similar system. Uh, it, it's less bureaucratic uh, and the process is more digitized and less people handle it, it's, it's done. Uh, but there are still human beings involved at the back office somewhere. Yeah. Uh, and the approvals are not done at the very highest level, but at a decentralized level, but uh, different systems. Yeah. So, uh, on average, uh, in which category do you think people, do you think people in the 15,000 rupee category or the 5,000 rupee category, are, where are the largest disbursements from the state or from the ministry uh, going largest to? Largest disbursement is on, uh, for the poor, poorest category. The, that's uh, the 15,000. Yes, we actually, we allocated uh, uh, we we had a plan of uh, providing uh, uh, benefit schemes for two million. Right, that was our plan, 
and what we had allocated for the poorest was 800,000 then uh, 400,000 for the poor category uh, another 400,000 for the vulnerable and the transition another 400,000 and and uh, initially this transition and uh, vulnerable groups are not the poor categories we cannot consider them as poor categories but due to covid uh, situation, pandemic situation as well as uh, economic recession, there were certain families who, who, who were doing well in life. But due to some, uh, due to these uh, economic constraints, they, they had their, their businesses or whatever their, their, uh, their living uh, conditions uh, dilapidated and because of that, uh, they were those two, two categories are categorized as transition and vulnerable. Right. And this transition group was actually originally it was plan, uh, we were planning to give only till the 31st of December last year, and the tra uh, vulnerable up to March uh, this year. But uh, His Excellency the President uh, decided that in the uh, in the capacity of the Minister of Finance decided that. Uh, still, people are not uh, capable enough of standing on their own feet. Mm. Because of that, we should extend this period. And it was extended to 31st of December 2024. Right. And the 2005 category, uh, the amount is also enhanced to 5,000 rupees. So, so it's now gone they are up. getting uh, from uh, June, from June, they are getting the areas from uh, from one category is getting areas from January, yeah. whereas the other category is getting from March. I see. So they got their areas as well. So it's a good system uh, on the whole, yeah. but um, not everyone uh, may be eligible because it will depend on the merits yes. of each and every case. Yes. Okay. Now that's the recipient end, and you explained very clearly the selection process. That's great. Who is funding this? Is it yes. your money or mine, or are we borrowing money from abroad and no. paying, giving it to the poor? This is purely taxpayers' money. Of course, fifteen percent of these uh, funds uh, are uh, given by the World Bank, mm -hmm. but the rest is purely taxpayers' money. Because this year, for 2024, the Treasury has allocated 204 billion, 204 billion rupees for our benefit scheme. Mm. And every month, we are paying uh, approximately uh, 10 to 12 billion rupees a month. Per month. And in addition to those four categories, we are also paying for disabled people, the elderly and the kidney patients mm. who are within these four groups. I see. So, now, for instance, if in the poorest category, the family of uh, uh, which belongs to the poorest category, there, if there is a kidney patient, he gets a supplement. He gets a top up on top of, of uh, 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 seven thousand seven thousand rupees mm. per month, in addition to the fifteen thousand. Right. It's very clear. So it's not just for the unemployed or the yes. poorest of the poor. But if there are other circumstances that they require money, yes. uh, and within those uh, sets of uh, uh, requirements, yeah. then they are entitled to it. Very good. So you mentioned 85% uh, of the funding of this project comes from taxpayers' money, yes. the, the tax that you and I pay yeah. uh, by way of income tax and possibly corporation business taxes for yeah. corporates. So the balance, 15%, uh, I, you mentioned it's a World Bank uh, assistance program. So I will just ask for the for, for clarity. This has to be when it's World Bank long-term funding with very low interest rates. Am very I right? Very low interest is long-term funding mm. uh, because it's for uh, for benefit uh, for social protection. Uh, because they they believe a lot in social protection yes. worldwide. Yes. And they have their own programs uh, worldwide. So it's it, it's a kind of initiative taken by the World Bank actually. Mm. Uh, so they have given us uh, very good concessions in, 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 interest wise and it's long term loan mm. uh, so uh, but the taxpayers money of course we have to earn, earn yes, that money course, yeah. so that is why i uh, now this 
these benefit schemes are not eternal. Unlike the samurudhi, where people start getting money, it is like a monthly salary. You can you go to the bank and get the money. It's you not can't, so. It's not so. For transition and vulnerable, as I said earlier, it's a very, for a very temporary period. Mm. And for others also, every year, recertification is being done. And some people who are economically well off will go off from yeah. our list, our benefit, our, our benefit scheme, mm. but they will remain in the social registry. Correct. They will re yeah. remain in the social registry, yeah. but some way they might go off from because they have uh, yeah. achieved their economic standards. Uh, and, and some people, uh, fresh people may get included. Get into it. And those who have done well and who have left the yes. beneficiary program may even come back if they, are, if they fall within yes. those criteria, basically. Yes. Very good. So, I mean, this is a system, I hope it will work on an open, continual basis, yeah. irrespective of who is in power. Yes. Because that's very important, uh, because I was quite dismayed when you said the Act was passed in 2002, and uh, it took another 20 years for it to be uh, implemented. Yeah. So, we are referring to the Aswasuma program, where we the government uh, of Sri Lanka are uh, helping the, the, the needy, the poorest of the poor, if I can use an open, loose phrase. Uh, now, as a board member, a member of the board of directors of the, uh, the, the Welfare Benefits Board, uh, now I know you are a busy attorney at law in civil practice and so on. Um, how does it how much of your time is devoted for this type of thing? I'm talking not just of you, but overall of the members uh, of the board of directors. Yeah, of course now our board, as I said earlier, the chairman and the four directors are there. Chairman is a retired SLA's officer, Mr. Jayanta Vijay Ratna. Then of course we have uh, uh, another member uh, from uh, as a director who is a SLA's, retired SLA's officer, who was former GA of Colombo, uh, Mr. Kamal Padmasiri. Then, of course, uh, then there is another lady, uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Musin, I think, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, from the Treasury. I see. Uh, then myself, and there is another uh, lady uh, uh, who is uh, who is from the civil society representing the civil I society. See. So you mentioned a, a member from the treasury yeah. as well as another member from civil society. Yeah. So they are the the outside members, etc. Yes. Not that they are outside, they are still members of the board of yes. directors, yes. but uh, to give it equal weight. I see. And this comes under the purview of which ministry? Minister of Finance. I see. Minister so of it's direct control and yes. supervision of the uh, Ministry of Finance. So, uh, you may be feeling a sense of uh, uh, well, doing something good for society of course, of course. As a, on a one-to-one -one basis. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I gain a lot of uh, self-satisfaction in uh, indulging in these uh, activities because, uh, as you say, I'm a, I'm a lawyer, I earn for myself. Okay. So, what I thought was to do something to the country as well. And, of course, this act this particular ben uh, the uh, welfare benefits uh, board itself is coming under the Minister of Finance, is doing uh, a human service to the society. And also, I must say, we are serving not the people who are only people who are in need, but the uh, considerable, uh, considerable uh, percentage of our manpower. So, considerable percentage of manpower who who were in position to uh, to, uh, sus to sustain themselves, to come back to the society again, and to uh, contribute uh, to the development of this country, uh, we are helping them mm -hmm. now. Uh, and also, I find that. Uh, now, certain people in the society say that now why, why we should not uh, give uh, anything 
just for nothing mm. from especially uh, financial uh, uh, cash transfer yeah. uh, just for nothing but i what i say is that they were doing very well some time ago uh, they were on their own feet but due to these economic constraints and due to covid uh, they were economically down and now we must help them to because this country needs rapid development mm. and for that we need this manpower as very, mm. very importantly because now we get the foreign uh, foreign exchange flowing from from the people who are uh, the remittances uh, workers remittances workers so in order to utilize those dollars mm. in a meaningful manner in a productive manner we need the the manpower here in this uh, this mm. country mm. so to empower them the empowerment uh, power the the needy people here now at the moment is very essential so in that aspect i feel very uh, happy and i have a sense of uh, self satisfaction excellent uh, in doing something for them yeah before we conclude i just wanted to ask another point you referred to cash transfers yes. what does that mean are you giving money over the counter or are they bank to bank transfers no 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 now once the beneficiaries are selected uh, we ask them to open up bank accounts mm. if they don't have bank accounts they have we ask them to open bank accounts and they have to go to the divisional secretary and get the necessary details and open bank accounts fresh bank accounts in any commercial bank in any commercial bank what at the moment we have asked or some uh, um, uh, government banks have uh, come forward yeah. for this uh, benefit schemes the private banks have still not come forward uh, and once the bank account is opened from the treasury when the money is transferred for that particular month say for this month if we, uh, if the benefit beneficiary is to be paid 12 billion mm. that 12 billion is given from the treasury and we from our board we disperse them we distribute or we we put the uh, direct those uh, funds to their respective bank accounts so no human being is yes. in, uh, human uh, manipulation is done yeah. when this cash transferring is done no human manipulation whatsoever mm. now i can't select a person and say to the board or to the divisional secretary or whoever i want this person to be benefited mm. i cannot it do doesn't. so so the the room for political interference favoritism all of that has been zeroed if not highly minimized heavily it, minimized it, it is zero i must say because the access mm. there are specific provisions to say that if anybody is found uh, guilty of uh, Uh, trying to uh, uh, to uh, to influence yeah the public officers in this process can be prosecuted i see so that's it's a quite a robust a uh, set of uh, rules and yes. regulations or a statute yes very good now i'm very pleased uh, to have had this discussion with you uh, so that uh, our viewers are better enlightened than at the start of the program uh, Thank you very much Kumar Dunusinga attorney at law for spending this time with us sharing the information as a resource person. Thank you very much. Thank you very much Rohan for giving this opportunity because this is uh, this is the first time I think uh, uh, a program in English was done uh, on behalf of the welfare benefits board and especially I want all the taxpayers of this country to know that you every cent you you pay as tax is utilized properly and in a productive manner yeah because there is this general un- misunderstanding perhaps an understanding that the tax payers money is wasted but yes. here you have pointed out uh, very clearly how the tax payers funds are fully utilized right. to help our own people who are in need thank you very much that was kumar thank you very much dunusing member of the board of directors of the welfare benefits board aswasuma thank you